Hey yo, what's good? What's poppin'? What's happening with you all? It's your boy Gold Phoenix in the flesh. Rise from the ashes and be blessed, man. Listen, I'm over here in Walton, Kentucky. I just got done delivering a load about 30 miles away from here. I came up here to wash out my trailer and park. Fill it up with fuel, of course. Go to bed in a little bit. I need to eat something. I got 43 minutes left on my clock. I'm pretty much just keeping up with the momentum I've built up so far. I came here from Denver, Colorado. And um, my next load is a pretty solid one. Nice little multi-stop one. I got one drop in Maryland. The last drop is in, what was it called? Connecticut. I'm out of it, dude. I've been driving all night. But, um... It has a solid rate it, it comes up to about 297 a mile so i can't complain about that whatsoever uh this low put me into profitability already paid all my fixed cost um i didn't spend too much in fuel i still have half a tank left so i'll be able to get away with knocking this load out with only putting 50 gallons in my truck so pretty much the majority of that rate is going straight to the pocket and we'll see what happens after that what else i could squeeze in for payroll but this is lining up to be a relatively good week i'm just hoping it all works out but yeah i'll get back to you guys later oh yeah before i forget uh i wanted to remind my fellow rookies out there if you are struggling with running the nights I'm just here to tell you, I don't blame you. It is hard when you can't see anything around you. It is, it's difficult. I do it because, as I've said before, nighttime, there's money getting hours right there. There ain't no traffic on the road for real. Even though somehow I managed to hit traffic in Indianapolis at midnight. How that happens, who knows. But um, it, it's harder to sleep during the day. You got a little bit of light leaking in, in the truck or whatever. The more you do it, the more your body kind of gets trained for it. Me personally, I can't seem to sleep longer than six hours when I'm in the truck. If I'm in a hotel or like at home, I'll probably sleep about eight to 10, but in this truck, about six, my body just automatically wakes up after about six hours. So you'll get used to it, you'll adjust. I haven't eaten all night, all day, so I need to put a little bit of something in my stomach. And they got a Denny's over there, so I'm going to get something. But a word of advice, if you can help it, don't eat right before you go to sleep. Because it's going to spike your blood sugar up a little bit. You're going to gain energy from that. And as your body is trying to burn that energy off that you gain from the food... It's gonna mess with your sleep a little bit. I'm about to eat though, like I'm, I'm freaking starving. All right, it has been another successful night of running. Uh, right now I'm in Hagerstown, Maryland, just chilling. I pretty much ran up, what was it, Interstate 71 to 70. Screwed around and missed my exit and ended up having to go through Columbus, which is never fun, but yeah. It's nighttime, it's just the construction is a complete pain. But it is what it is. Uh, my first drop isn't until 2300 tonight. It is, what, 7.09 in the morning. So I'm pretty much gonna stay awake for a little while and go to sleep later. If I sleep right now, I'll wake up way too early and I don't wanna drive you know, several hours after I wake up. You know, I'll be in the mood to just get going as soon as I wake up take a deep breath realize where the heck I'm at and then you know it's time to rock and roll so I'm not gonna rush it I'll probably just you know throw something on Netflix or something to edit this video what I wanted to talk about was this truck that I have had shoot about a year and a half now over a year and a half actually there's not too much content on it, at least not with the engine that I have. You know, you find 
international LTs with um what is it the Cummins the X15 no one really talks about the A26 or their experience with it and I'm pretty positive what I'm gonna tell you is gonna be hard to believe but now it's my experience so I'm gonna talk about it and there she is it's the Navistar International A26 this one is spec with uh, 450 horsepower 1550 torque so this thing cannot pull worth anything but she does enough to get the job done so I can't really complain too much about that uh, I have not had many issues out of this thing it's pretty much just been um, you know I had a turbo go out I had that replaced under warranty so that was no big deal uh, I had a my new oil leak at one point but I would literally have to put in maybe half a gallon of oil in six months like it was nothing but I got it fixed anyway so of, of course warranty I got that done I got the recalls fixed there was a recall on the turbo down pipe and um the ECM that had a recall on it too so I got both of those repaired other than that this thing really has been bulletproof she's done me well no issues with the belts no issues with the fan that's a six blade fan you barely hear it when it's climbing up hills another great thing about it or you know great or not depending on how you guys look at it this is a very low revving engine it makes all of its torque starting at 900 rpm all the way up to 1400 after that it's all horsepower up to 1700 and then after that it's pretty much dies off but it's geared with the 12 speed Eaton Endurance transmission which in my experience I've driven with the 10 speed ultra shift I've used the Detroit DT12 and the Freightliners this is by far my favorite hands down it's the smartest it tends to know what it's doing I've noticed going uphill it can be a little bit stubborn about downshifting but it makes so well not so much but it makes all of its torque so low you know it's no big deal if I'm climbing a mountain at 1200 1300 rpm it'll get the job done it does not need to scream this engine does not like screaming whatsoever relative you know if you compare it to like a pack R, maybe uh, i don't know too much about the cummins motors but you know i know detroit and the pack R. this one doesn't need to get very high up in its rpms to get the job done whatsoever nor does it like it so and of course turbo all that all that back there has been replaced at one point um never had a coolant leak that thing's never broken even though i'm not too fond of where it's mounted to me it's a little low you no know, a rock could come up smash that thing at any moment but luckily it hasn't happened uh, something i'm not very fond of is the fact that it has spring arms here instead of leaf springs so i know that's similar to the freight liners but this truck in my opinion rides a little bit better than a freight liner and i'll show you guys why the only thing saving this thing is the airbag speaking of which before i get to that look what happened again oh i'll get that replaced when i get to it i'm, I'm not rushing it but you see how big those airbags are i don't know if y'all see it compared to my hand they're huge absolutely huge and because they're so big the rear end absorbs shock quite a bit better than something like a Freightliner where it has, you know, I want to say airbags about two thirds the size of those. These things are massive on this truck. I like that quite a bit. But of course, getting back to the engine, another thing I didn't like when I got it, it came with halogen headlights. So I swapped those out with LEDs. That's the low beam, that's the high beam. I'm not messing with that too much. It's zip tied right over here, so it's not dangling all the way down there. I had one blow out when I did it before, so I replaced it, zipped it up. Um, but yeah, she has been very good to me. I always found it odd though, this truck didn't have any insulation up here, but you know, that's no biggie, who cares? Another thing I like about this truck though, is where the mirrors are. My truck's a mess right now, so I'm not going show y'all too much i'm gonna do some cleaning up while i got some time but i like the position of the mirrors quite a bit 
those are in the perfect spot my only caveat with them is they're not breakaway mirrors so if somebody were to hit it they just snap off completely unlike the freight liners the steering wheel is not offset at all it's actually perfectly centered with where you're sitting and the freight liners are slightly to the left that's kind of a daimler mercedes type of thing if anybody didn't know daimler owns mercedes they also own freight liners so you drive a Freightliner, you're basically driving a Benz, which is hilarious because they ride terribly, but it's Mercedes nonetheless. Another thing, this one has automatic headlights, which don't work. What it does is the headlights are always on. Even if I put it in the off position, the headlights themselves are the daytime running lights. So no matter what I do, they never shut off, which is another reason I switched to LEDs on top of the fact I drive at night all the time. What the automatic headlights will do though is if I shut the truck off after about 20 seconds, it'll cut all the lights off on the truck so I don't have to do it myself. Which doing it myself would be faster. I'm just lazy in certain things. You know, I like luxury or anything that has to do with it. So, you know, anything automatic like my transmission, judge me, uh, I'll take it. That's just one less thing to think about. So say what you want about that is what it is it's just how i like to operate you know i like to lock in zone in on what it is that i'm doing and not have too much going on around me because i'm a terrible multitasker at the end of the day so it is what it is another thing i absolutely love about this truck is just how quiet it is like i said i've driven a 2020 freightliner i didn't tell you of the year 2020 freightliner 2018 peterbilt and out of the three trucks I have driven, including this one, this is by far the quietest out of every single one of them. You barely hear it. When I first got it, it kind of tripped me out because the first load I ever did with this thing was a beer load. Paid like absolute garbage. It was a little under a dollar a mile when I took that one. But um, I thought it wasn't pulling. And it was all in my head because you can't hear it. You really can't. Of course, if you turn the radio off and all that good stuff, you can hear the engine a little bit. But for the most part, it's so quiet. If you're listening to something, audio book, uh, podcast, music, you got some YouTube videos playing in the background with the screen off, for, you know, um, for safety reasons, of course, like a playlist or something like that, you can't hear it. You just can't. You barely hear any wind noise. You barely hear the engine. If you're climbing up a mountain, you barely hear the fan. Most of the time, I don't even notice it comes on. I only notice it if I'm watching the temperature rise above 200 and then just drop. And when I say drop, it drops very fast when that fan comes on. To be a six blade fan doing that much work that quickly, I'm impressed. I really am. I think it might be beneficial if I had like a fan switch to where I could turn it on and off myself because I think running it up to as high of a temperature as it will get to before it comes on could damage it. But like I've said, I lease this truck. By the time I get rid of it in March, it'll probably barely have over 300,000 miles if I get 300,000 miles on it by that point. I'm at. 262 right now so to me it's no big deal i'll just give it back and let it be somebody else's issue but with all that being said i mean she's been good to me she's really been good to me um never left me stranded anywhere you know even in the winter time never had issues with getting it started or anything of course i use diesel anti-gel and stuff like that keep some 911 on me as well but she's always just cranked up and been able to move. I don't work it to death. I don't have a very heavy foot. But for what this thing was built to do, just as a general OTR truck, you know, I have no regrets with picking this one out of the other options that I had. I've told you guys before, this wasn't the first truck I looked at. This is the fourth. And I'm glad I settled on this one. It, it's made me a lot of money. She's been reliable, you know, and from, from the time I got it to now and hopefully 
onward into March, you know, I've always been able to count on it. So I don't really have any complaints aside from the fact that top bunk over there doesn't fold up. It's stuck in one spot, but whatever. I just use it for storage. Uh, one more positive though, the mattress that I sleep on. You could fit a much larger mattress in this truck compared to a Freightliner. For example, uh, you guys all know about the drift mattresses you could get at Iowa 80, what's that other one, Joplin 44, Kenley 95. We all know about drift mattresses. The biggest one they have, you could fit in here. That's what I have, and I love it. I love that thing so much. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much it. My experience with this truck has been very positive, very, I'm very grateful for it. Now as for what I'll replace it with, that's yet to be determined. From what I've seen and what I'm hearing, Peterbilt isn't allowing anyone to order any of the new, like the new body style 579s like with the new front, the narrow nose, stuff like I really want one of those. But I don't know if I'll be able to order one at the time I need to order it, which I need to order it in December, realistically. December or January. I don't know if that's going to happen. There's rumors at my company that they might be able to get their hands on some Kenworths. If I could get my hands on a Kenworth, if they actually go through it, I'll gladly order one in a heartbeat if I can't get a Peterbilt yeah I'll get a Kenworth but from what it's looking like it's looking like I'll end up getting a Freightliner and joining in with the Detroit Demons if y'all know what I'm getting at not too happy about that but if I have to do it I'm gonna end up getting one fully loaded that's just what it is. I don't care what it costs I dump $10,000 in options. If I have to get something I don't want, it's gonna be as comfortable as I want it to be. So that's just my perspective on it. You don't have to agree. It's okay if you don't. It's just how I operate. But that's pretty much everything I had to say. Um, I'm gonna continue on with this load. Drop tonight. Shoot up through New York City, which is always fun. As you guys know, the GW Bridge. I'm a cry paying the toll, but do what you got to do. As I always tell you guys, be happy, stay blessed, do not be afraid. Ugh. Do not be afraid to make drastic changes in your life. It might end up being the best decision you ever made. I'm tired. I'm gonna try to force myself to stay awake for a few hours. Edit this. Go to bed. Get up and get back to work. I'm Gold Phoenix. And I'm out.